Well, good morning. Hello, YouTube community. I'm Reverend Wendy Hamilton, and you are joining me once again for my weekly spirit talk, uh, this week entitled Make Your Mark. I thank you so much for being diligent and uh, joining me uh, on these Sunday mornings where we get a chance to kind of share briefly and and debrief and build ourselves back up and get refreshed and renewed for the week ahead. I am so appreciative of all of you who subscribe. Thank you so much. Um, and that, uh, you know, get notifications and they want to find out, you know, when I'm going to be going live again. And I am just, I still continue to be overwhelmed and want to say thank you, but please do please keep sharing, subscribing and clicking the notification button so that you'll know when I'm on. But uh, for the most part, this is the place where we can come and be encouraged and feel safe and get a word of motivation uh, for the week. And my, what a week this has been. Uh, it has been a humdinger of a week. And I feel like I say that every week. It's amazing how uh, each week seems to build upon itself. And so uh, here we are on Sunday, June the 7th, and we are standing on the cusp of some groundbreaking monumental change in the United States of America. And I am so grateful to, to, to be witnessing it, to be a part of it certainly, and, and to be, uh, be able to reflect on um, what I'm seeing, what's happening, and make some real time changes. We're in the midst of like history being made. So we're not like reading this in a book and saying to ourselves, wow, I wonder what it was like uh, to be a part of that movement. What if I had been alive during that particular time? Wonder what I would have been doing. Well, guess what? Now's your time. <laughs> there is no time like the present for you to now be participating in what will be making up the history books of our children's children uh, many years from now. So my topic today is around that. It's around the title, Make Your Mark. Make Your Mark. What are you doing right now in the midst of this historical moment to make a mark, to make a contribution? How are you rising to the challenge? Now, I am not talking from a cliched standpoint because I know sometimes it can feel like during these rough times, folks come along and they're not very considerate of all that's happening and they just suggest that you should just snap out of whatever's happening in your life right now and get right out there on the front lines. I'm not minimizing everything that's happening right now. What I am saying though, is there's a real opportunity for us to impact and affect change. And I want everyone who's listening today to figure out what you have to offer. Nothing's too big, nothing's too small. Any gesture in this moment is going to be counted toward the cause. So I've I live in Washington, D.C., uh, as many of you know, and this has really been kind of like a ground zero, if you will, for a lot of the movements that have been happening this week. So so here we are, you know, against the backdrop of the coronavirus pandemic, which is still happening and still very much a concern. We had, of, of course, the, uh, the, the killing of George Floyd last week that sparked a movement, excuse me, two weeks ago now, that has sparked a movement of protests that have lasted and at least 10 days at this point, have gone into their 10th day. And that is monumental in and of itself. And not that it's just, uh, you know, the typical types of protests. In, in DC, we're used to protest. We are the protest capital of the world because most of the organizations and causes that people rally around or against have some kind of headquarters here in Washington. So I'm completely used to, uh, you know, going to work and having to be rerouted on my way to church or, or to, uh, to the school where I work during the day uh, by protesters being not only marching, but being escorted by our local law enforcement. We're just used to it here in DC. But I tell you what, this time has been a little bit different. This is unprecedented in terms of the numbers, in terms of the diversity of, of, of race, of age, of gender. This 
particular week, this particular impact that George Floyd's death is having on America is something to behold. I, you know, as a preacher, as a religious leader, I was sharing last week that I want to be out there. You know, I want to be on the front lines. A lot of the civil rights movements and, and, and big uprisings of the past were organized with religious leaders being a part of it. And certainly last weekend, you saw some uh, protesters uh, outside the White House in front of a church that's right across the street from the White House uh, be subdued with tear gas and pepper spray uh, so that the president could come across and uh, do whatever he did. That's a, that's a whole nother conversation I don't wanna get into today. But I wanna say that there were many religious leaders out there in front of that church on that day giving water, uh, giving uh, masks, you know, making supplies available for the peaceful protesters who were assembling there. And so while you may not see a lot of religious representation on the camera, we're out there and we're doing what we can. I am doing a lot of prayer and a lot of support and a lot of vocal online advocacy because I think all voices coming to the table in the midst of this can be very helpful. It's monumental in the sense that I, I think I saw somebody posted, it's almost like we're experiencing the 1918 pandemic flu, the uh, 1929 depression, and the civil rights movements of 1968 all at one time. Like all of these things have come together in the last three months. And it is, it is astonishing if you think about it in that light. And so there's so much that's being recorded and so much that's taking place, it can almost feel overwhelming. Like I am concerned about, I'm happy about the large protests, but I am concerned about coronavirus and, and, and you know, the, the possibility, the very real possibility of seeing, you know, cases spike in the coming weeks following these uh, these protests. So, you know, there, there's a certain balance to be made here in all of this, but I don't want to let that take away from the notion that we all have an opportunity to participate in this moment in history. Whatever you have to offer matters. You know, the large protests, they've been showing those all over the uh, camera, which I love. I mean, DC, of course, Philadelphia, you know, California, New York. I mean, the just the, the the sheer mass of people that have been protesting. But then I saw yesterday, it's worldwide. I saw the Netherlands and I saw Spain and Italy. Syria had uh, some Syrian artists painted a George Floyd mural. mural. Um, Paris, you name it. This is the world crying out on behalf of Black Lives Matter. Shut up. That is amazing. That 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 has to be God uh, orchestrating the universe. The source of all that is speaking to the hearts of the world and saying enough is enough. You know, one of the marches I, I, I didn't mention, six teenage girls. I posted this earlier in the week on social media. Six teenage girls, ages 14 to 16, organized a Black Lives Matter protest, which drew 10,000 people in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, which is not necessarily known for a, a to be a cul-de-sac of, of, of social justice uprisings, not knocking not Nashville, but you don't typically see the response that you saw in some of the the more Southern states. And so I applaud those young ladies because they did not look at their age. They did not look at their station in life and decide or determine they could not do anything. They all met on social media. They connected, I believe on Twitter or Instagram and they organized this March themselves, the six of them online. And when they got there, 10,000 people showed up. Do not tell me <laughs> that it is not possible for us to make some measure of, of, of a mark, some measure of contribution, regardless of how, how young we are. Um, you know, in scripture, in the Bible, there's a story about um, the prophet Jeremiah, who was very young when God came to him and asked him to 
go and speak on behalf of the nations and, and, and use, you know, be sort of a representative for God's voice. And Jeremiah was very young at the time. And he says, you know, and I paraphrase because this is the way I preach. <laughs> I like to make, you know, scripture relevant and tangible and practical. So I envision this conversation and God is like, hey, Jeremiah, I need you to go speak to the people. I need you to go carry my voice forward, my plan for you know, whatever, equality, justice, whatever God was asking of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah's response to God was, you, I, no, no, I can't do that. I, I'm, I'm too young. The people won't listen to me. And God said, don't say you're too young. Just, just go where I ask you to go and say what I you know, ask you to say, and you won't be alone. And so when I see these young people, and, and not only just the young people with Black Lives Matter, but young people with the March for Life, uh, the March for Our Lives and gun reform, you know, front, uh, young people on the front lines in Flint, um, you know, demanding water, um, just all of these movements, Greta Thunberg doing her thing for, for climate change, Malala speaking out, you know, for young girls in her country. These are young people. They are fearless and they will step up knowing that there's a force with them that's bigger than themselves. They, they are, are relentless in their resolve. And so I am encouraged by the young people because they ultimately are going to, to save us old geezers <laughs> and get us uh, you know, to a place where there is a better world that we can, can rely upon. So kudos and shout out to the young people who are out there doing whatever they can do to, uh, to make their voices heard. You know, one sign that I saw, they said, you know, today we march, tomorrow we vote. That's what I'm talking about. That is, is activism. And so now I turn back to you. What mark can you make? Martin Luther King said, and he said a lot of stuff. So I'm always going to, you know, be quoting his stuff. <laughs> God bless him. God, you know, and he, when he spoke his first sermon uh, around civil rights and social justice, he was 13 years old. 13. Yes, he was ordained as a preacher and speaking out. He started speaking out about rights and social justice at 13 years old. And many people forget that when he was assassinated, he was only 39 years old. So, so look at the amount of change that he was able to impact in his short time, you know, given the circumstance. He was an, a worldwide icon by the time he was 39 years old. You, we can do this. He said, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And I don't think he meant that in a, you know, in a, uh, sort of intimidating way or, or shaming way. What he was saying is in times of struggle, we, we know what the enemy's gonna say. We know the enemy's gonna rise up. We know our enemies are gonna tell us to sit down and be quiet and don't protest like that. Uh, you, you know, you're, too, you're being too, too, too loud, but then when you take a knee, don't do that either because that's being disrespectful. So what does that mean? So you're just saying don't protest at all is, is essentially what you're saying. Nonetheless, we're used to that. We expect the enemies to speak up and, and say what they're going to say and to push back. But what, what, what is more hurtful and harmful sometimes is to see the silence of our friends, those who are kind of sitting on the sidelines and not really saying anything. Now, I recognize that some friends and ally organizations, and I appreciate this, are saying, you know what, Reverend Wendy, I just don't want to say the wrong thing. I just don't want to, you know, offend anybody. I'm not sure what to say or what to do. I get that. And thank you. And God bless you. I appreciate that. But I believe that if you have the right heart and that you, you have the right intention, you know, and the right spirit, people will, people will get where you're, you know, what you're trying to do and where you're coming from. You know, uh, I posted this other little sign and I loved it. Uh, it was a little girl. She was holding it up and it said, uh, we said Black Lives Matter. We never said only Black Lives Matter. And we never said that all lives didn't matter. We know that all lives matter. But right now in this moment, it's Black lives that are in danger and we need your help. So that's what this protest, that's what this movement is about. And it seems like this time is different. It seems like people are getting that and they're understanding. Like 
no one's suggesting that any, anyone's life is, is, is more valuable than another, but people for the first time, it feels like to me, at least in my lifetime, and I'm 51 years old, people are actually hearing, not just listening, but they're hearing what we're saying and they're taking a uh, connected action as a result. And it is, it is something to behold. So whatever you can do, can you make a sign? Uh, can you pass out water? You know, I've even seen some one woman or one man protests happening across the country in towns where you would just never think necessarily that they would be hosting a Black Lives Matter or civil rights protest march. I've, I've seen a lady in, I believe it was Paducah, Kentucky. And she said, you know what? I'm the only one in my community but if I got to be out here by myself with this sign, I'm going to do it. I saw another woman. She was walking along the, the freeway. Uh, it looked like she was in California. I cannot remember exactly. I don't know if they identified where she was, but her son posted this and said, my mom couldn't get anybody to march with her. None of her friends would march. So she is marching by herself. And I said, well, march on, sister. March on. She was a white sister. And she was like, if I got to be out here she was pulling up like a wagon behind her that had a sign in it and some other symbolic items. And she said, you know what? I'll, I'll just drag it. I'll be out here by myself. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what we need. I don't care what your neighbors think or, or might say about you or your coworkers. It's not about them right now. This is about history being made. This is about actually sort of swinging the pendulum of our nation closer to justice for all, to what it was founded upon in the first place. And so I said it last week and I wanna say it again. I think this time is different. I do. I've been through some marches and I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've been, and even with these, uh, these killings, these, you know, the Trayvon Martin and Tamir Rice and Sandra Bland and, and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey. I mean, the, the long list of, of unarmed black people being killed by the police department has been happening for decades. But this time the country has come together and said, no, nah, it's not enough. It, it's been heartening. It's, it's also been disheartening to see some of what's happening um, in our police departments. Um, this is something that black people have seen um, for, for many, many years. And so um, this is what we've been talking about, that there is a, uh, some some situations that are happening that don't feel helpful, you know, from an agency who is designed to protect and serve us. So definitely are praying for deep, deep reforms to come out of this time as well. But at the end of the day, folks, it, I just want to encourage you, no matter where you are, how you look, how you you know feel per se, um, use caution, use wisdom, but get out there and get in this. We, history is being written right now as we speak. And I want to know what will your section say? What will you be able to share with your grandchildren about what you did when the world was about to change? Did you rise to the challenge? Did you make your mark? If so, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank on behalf of every, not that I can speak on behalf of every, but, but symbolically, I just want to thank you. I thank every friend, person listening, every ally that has stepped forward to say, we're not going to take it anymore. We're speaking up on behalf of our people of color, you know, brothers and sisters in this movement. You're not going to treat them any kind of way because when you treat them that way, you're treating me that way. And that's not the world we want to live in. Thank you guys so much for everything. Keep making your mark. Keep, keep holding folks accountable. Keep doing what you're doing. And, and, and know that uh, we'll be able to look back on this time, certainly, certainly, and see that this is when real change, the next wave of transformational change occurred. Will you pray with me? Oh, gracious God, 
We are so just spellbound by what's happening in our nation and in our world. God, we thank you for being alive um, during this moment. God, we know that um, in the midst of this pandemic where so many lives have been lost and then also in these uprisings, we are standing up and speaking out on the behalf of lives that have been lost. And so God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be alive, to speak for them, to honor their lives in a way that uh, lets people know that those folks who are no longer with us mattered. Their deaths will not and should not be in vain. God, we thank you for being with us, for empowering and encouraging us, keeping us as safe as possible. May we rise to the challenge. May we make our mark on this world in, in small ways, in large ways, but in ways that make a difference so that when we look back and when we reflect on what has happened, we can smile with a smile of satisfaction that says, I was a part of that. I was there. I helped. And to God be the glory. Thank you. And we praise you in all of your holy names this day. Amen. Amen, everybody. Thank you. I will see you uh, next week. Get out there and make your mark. Take care.